Three teams already making a change at quarterback. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Uh, good show for you today. Uh, we'll talk about the quarterback changes. There are three. One is due to injury. Uh, we'll go over the players of the week and an early preview of week two. And overall, it's a much better week than week one. My goodness, if somehow the Sunbelt comes up with 10 victories this week, uh, it'll be really impressive. All right, so... Let's get the App State injury out of the way. Ryan Berger is out for three to four weeks. That came out, or I missed it on yesterday, or a couple of days ago, I guess. Or, well, I guess it would have been, yeah, well, today's Wednesday. So I would have missed it on Monday, sorry. <laughs> Sean Clark did announce it at his press conference, not at the Sunbelt Media Day, uh, or the Sunbelt Media uh, opportunity. So Sean Clark announced it then, three to four weeks. Joey Aguilar is going to be uh, the quarterback. Uh, he played two seasons at Diablo Valley Community College. He did obviously have, uh, you know, a good ball game, uh, four t- touchdowns uh, this past weekend. Also, somebody in the App State SID's office needs to look at a map uh, or at least know the geography. Although, if, I guess if you look at a map, it does kind of look like Central But you can't be northeast of San Francisco and be in central California. So that's obviously somebody who's not from there. Uh, But that's okay. Just uh, teasing a little little bit. Uh, But the question is, you know, does Ryan Berger get Wally Pipped? Is that a reference everybody knows? That's the first baseman for the Yankees. He had a headache and decided he couldn't play. And some guy named Lou Gehrig came in and played. Now, I mean, here's one of those ball games. App State's going to Carolina. What happens if Joy Aguilar... Joey Aguilar beats Carolina. I mean, you know, and then keeps on rolling or plays well against Carolina and keeps on rolling in there. I don't know, three and one by the time Berger comes back. Maybe four and one. You're going to make a change. You know, they had that, used to have that rule. You don't lose your job because of injury. Quarterbacking may be a different uh, situation. So we'll see. Okay. So Ryan Berger is not being replaced. He's out due to injury, at least for now. And this certainly gives you know, Aguilar an opportunity to, you know, take over the role, right? Didn't win the job in the fall camp, but, you know, ready to go at a moment's notice, especially in this ball game, that uh, you could come in at any point in time. And now is his opportunity. He's going to start for the next at least three to four weeks, all right? All right, so that is that is due to injury, all right? That is not we're making a change for change sake. JMU is making a change for change sake. JMU gave the job to Alonza Barnett III, redshirt freshman, and the lights were too bright. Is that what it appears? Three for 11, 15 yards, and an interception. And that was it. And Kurt Signetti is telling everybody, well, not everybody, but after the game said, our guys were scared to call a pass play because they didn't know what was going to happen. And so now they're going to Jordan McLeod. He has a little bit more experience. And by a little bit, I mean he is in his sixth year of college. He's also pretty bright, chasing after a graduate degree in cyber intelligence. My goodness. He spent three years at USF in Tampa. Then he went out to Arizona, played a couple of years there. His brother played at uh, Clemson, Ray Ray McLeod. Uh, So he has football lineage. And plenty of experience, and he played pretty well as well. Again, I'm not sure, you know, how much JMU needed him. What was it 38 to three over Bucknell? But for now, it is Jordan McLeod. Now, if you're Kurt Signetti, do you get Barnett in there? You got to give him some confidence somewhere along the way. You don't want to ruin the kid. Because Signetti thought that Barnett was going to be his quarterback at least for the next two, three years, right? A redshirt freshman is going to play at least two years, maybe more. 
And so you got to get that confidence back. Uh, remember, he got the he got the gig. You know, he was with the ones. He was with the twos on day one, and then he was with the ones on day two, and never gave it back. And due to that, it was a little bit surprising on what happened to him on Saturday against Bucknell. Uh, now this week, they're going to Virginia. Pretty cool. I think I saw Dave Reigert, voice of the uh, Duke, say 40 years since they've been going to Virginia, since they've been there. So this is a big ball game. Virginia's first home game since the tragedy last year. So there'll be a lot of emotion on both sides uh, of the field. Uh, but obviously, Virginia is just not very good and a really good opportunity for James Madison to start 2-0. and And maybe if, if, you know, sad to say, if Lonzo Barnett can't handle playing against Bucknell, He's certainly not going to be able to handle against Virginia, and I don't think Virginia is that good. So right now, for now, Jordan McLeod is your quarterback at JMU. Also, one more change, and he didn't play quite that well, to be honest with you, is uh, ULM's Hunter Herring, uh, the transfer from the Cajuns. They came, he came in and saved the day. He was only four of nine. Was he even, oh, now I got to find out. Uh, four of nine, was it 22 yards off the top of my head? I'm going to be unbelievably impressed if that's what it was. That can't be 22 yards. It was four, of nine, 22 yards. One touchdown. Uh, he came in for Jaya Wright. Uh, Jaya was a 10 of 21, 70 yards. But he threw two interceptions. Hunter Herring comes in in the fourth quarter, and Yoel Monroe scores 14 points. They actually missed a field goal at the end, and it could have been more. Uh, they did get some help from Army. It was a 13 to 3 ball game. Army up top. ULM punted. Let me see when this was. This was in the beginning of the fourth quarter. Hunter Herring came in. It was a 13-play drive. They, oh, fourth and 10 from the ULM 46. All right, how do you get a 13-play drive? My goodness. Uh, but that's what it was. 13-play drive. Uh, that pinned That pinned him back. Well, here you go. This is it's a Levi Lewis thing. They got Army three and out. He handed the ball off to Hunter Smith. Touchdown. <laughs> One play, 62 yards. They force a fumble on the next Army possession. Four plays later, they score another touchdown. Hunter Herring to uh, Tyrone Howell for nine yards. And it touched on the ball. You know, they started at the 50. Uh, then Army throws an interception. We know Army's not very proficient at throwing the ball, but now you're trailing. And they actually, ULM actually missed incredibly short, it was blocked, an incredibly short field goal from uh, the seven. So he could have, he being Herring, could have led ULM to 17 points all in the fourth quarter. And I think I heard Terry Bowden say he just kind of slowed things down. He just kind of got everybody in a rhythm, just kind of let everybody catch their breath uh, and uh, and led them to a victory. And again, did look, if they beat Lamar this Saturday, with I believe Hunter Herring being the starter, uh, they will be 2-0 for the first time since 2018. So that's very cool if they uh, can do that. And so we'll see if Hunter Herring's going to keep his job. Uh, do you get, again, Jaya right in there? You know, again, somewhere along the way, you're going to need a second quarterback. It always happens. Very rarely does the same quarterback play every single play and it's not just going to be mop-up time. Somewhere along the way, you're going to need somebody to come in and uh, make a play. All right, when we come back, we will go over the players of the week in the Sun Belt. At the end of the show, we'll continue to do a quick preview of the games coming up this week because it is much, much different. Most of the teams are playing FCS. Not this week, baby. There are some good matchups in uh, the Sun Belt, and I can't believe I just babied everybody on Locked on a Sun Belt. Let me tell you a little bit about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. 
It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. All right, Dave Schultz, Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Certainly, uh, a lot of players could have been deemed players of uh, the week. Kamani Vidal for Troy, <laughs> only like 248 yards. He certainly uh, could have uh, been in. Jordan McLeod coming in in relief, throwing four touchdowns, only like 11 to 13, but that's a pretty good percentage of completed passes, even good percentage of thrown passes for touchdowns. He could have been it as well. But tough to give it to anybody else besides TJ Finley. TJ Finley got it, of course, leading Texas State over a huge win over Baylor. 298 yards, four touchdowns, and a 42 31 win over the Baylor Bears to earn the Sun Belt Offensive Player of, of the Week. Again, tough to. Tough to say, well, my guy should have won it when what he did. All right. Other guys probably had just as good as games, but not on such a big stage and not in such a big upset. Right. Grace McCall had a shot, you know, could have pulled off the upset at UCLA. Uh, did not. Uh, you know, Carter Bradley could have played like Michael Pratt for South Alabama, but did not. And so TJ Finley goes into Waco and helps lead, if not just plan out led uh texas state to a victory to earn offensive player of the week i think that was a pretty easy one 22 of 30 uh through three touchdowns rushed for one um and now all of a sudden texas state i mean they're going to utsa part of that really good schedule in week two it's gonna be a tough ball game you're certainly not gonna get surprised although that 12 and a half point spread is really enticing really enticing. All right, football, the Sunbelt Player of the Week defensively, Clayton Isbell from Coastal Carolina. Uh, Chanticleer's super safety, reading this from the Sunbelt website, tied the single-game program record with three interceptions in Coastal Carolina's season opening, 27-13 to defeat at UCLA. Boy, getting three interceptions and losing by two scores, that's got to hurt. Ouch, 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 ouch. Uh, also added nine tackles, five solo in his debut uh, as a Chanticleer. Two of Isabel's interceptions came in the end zone, holding a Bruins first quarter drive that had reached the Chanticleer eight yard line and a fourth quarter drive that had progressed to the Coastal Carolina 10 yard line. He returned his third quarter pick, the lone interception um, for 29 yards. So, boy, I mean, those are great numbers, but boy, you're looking back, you enter, you turn the ball, you get them to turn the ball over t- three times, whew, and you're 14 13, I think. Coastal Carolina had a couple late turnovers, but it was after his 14-13. So that's uh, unfortunate for Coastal Carolina, but a heck of a week for Clayton uh, Isbell. All right, special teams of the week. Southern Miss is Andrew Stein from Slidell, Louisiana. Golden Eagles redshirt junior kicker Andrew Stein converted a career-high four field goals in Southern Miss's season opening 40-14 to victory over in-state foe Alcorn State. Didn't play for a while. After a 1,371-day hiatus, a four-year hiatus, (laughs) approximately thereof, the Slidell native connected on attempts from 25-23-52-41, becoming the first Golden Eagles kicker to convert four field goals in a game since Parker Seanfield versus uh, Louisiana Tech in 2017. Stein, who last kicked a field goal for Southern Miss during the 2019 season, was primarily used as a kickoff specialist in five games from 20 to 22. All right, so a couple of things. He's got a leg from 52 and 41. If you are, you know, part of the 
fighting Will Hall's coaching staff, you're probably a little bit disappointed, although it's a 40-14 to 14 victory. You can't be disappointed in too much. But you just don't, as somebody who does not particularly like field goals, nothing is worse than a 25 or 23-yard field goal, unless it's to win it or at the end of the half. Nothing worse than that. If you're on the 20, if you're it's a 23 yard field goal, that means you're on the seven or on the six. You're on the six. You go back seven yards. Now you're on the 13. Now it's a 23 yard field goal. The 25, right? You're 15. You're at the eight. Come on. Those are really annoying field goals. Uh, uh, oh, however, he did make them and he did kick a couple of long ones. So, you know, a hashtag always a bright side, I guess. But when you're inside the 10-yard line, you really need to convert against the defense. You know, they got away with it, beating Alcorn State. You know, I know it's Chris Gordy's show, but, you know, if LSU converts on a couple of possessions inside the 10, maybe it's a different ball game. So that's the way I look at it. It's a nice win, nice way to start the season, but that's going to annoy me. If I'm Will Hall, you don't want 20-yard field goals, 25 and 23-yard field goals, unless it's at the end of the half or unless it's uh, to win the ballgame. Then then I don't care. <laughs> uh, all right, let's take one more timeout. When we come back, we'll do a quick preview of week two. Scanning it just before the show, it is really impressive. I mean, the Cajuns, no, South Alabama has Southeastern, but there's a lot of good matchups and Power 5 matchups. Some group of five matchups. It's going to be really good. So we'll quickly talk about them. We'll go into details a little bit later uh, in the week on the week two matchups to preview them a bit later. All right. We'll do that when we come back. I do want to thank you. We are over 610 or like 612 subscribers. And as much as I want to get to, you know, a thousand by Halloween, I do have to thank you because it is. It's because of you guys. I mean, the amount that we have had over the last, can you imagine this? We actually went to 613 as I was watching it. So that is since Sunday, Sunday, Monday, today is Tuesday recording it. We've had 13. All right. Now I'm trying to get 50 a week. That's a lot. But in three days, I got 13. So I need to do a little bit better because you need to kind of get like 10 a day. So I do appreciate it. We're 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 gonna get really close, I believe, to uh, that a thousand mark by Halloween. So thank you so much. The audio downloads are up. Uh, I talked to my boss today. He's really impressed uh, on how many we had. So thank you for that. Don't forget to subscribe uh, and like those videos. Share the videos on YouTube. I try to put them in the Facebook groups uh, that I found in some. I have to find some more. Uh, from the different teams that I've not included for some reason. Uh, but if you want to share them, you're, you're free, uh, you are free to do that and put them in your team's Facebook groups if you're a member of one. Uh, also, don't forget, down you can uh, subscribe to the audio portion of the show. Apple Podcasts and Spotify seem to be the most popular. And, of course, if you are viewing Apple Podcasts, please rate and review. So it's a big help. Thank you so much. Got a little pat on the back from the boss, man. So that's always nice uh, when we are continuing to grow and again, the goal is a thousand subscribers by Halloween. We didn't start doing video until after the football season. So I missed all of last year, including that big one weekend where, you know, three Sunbelt teams beat three Power Five teams, including AM and Notre Dame. Uh, so thank you again. Thanks very much. Please subscribe in YouTube and in Apple Podcast or Spotify. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sun Belt. Let's take a quick look. Try to do this quick. I'm never short-winded, so we'll see how long this takes. But we do have uh, some really good matchups this week. As I mentioned, South Alabama's taking on Southeastern. They took on Tulane last week, and they're going to take on Oklahoma State next week. Boy, do they need this Southeastern win. So uh, South Alabama's got Southeastern. Uh, the Cajuns are actually playing Old Dominion, so an early conference ball game week two. That's in Norfolk. How about Troy going out to Kansas State? Really good opportunity for the Trojans. Kansas State better not overlook them. Troy, an interesting 16 and a half point underdog. Do not underestimate the Trojans. As we mentioned, James Madison going to Virginia, so that's two Power Five matchups. 
the best matchup in the week, maybe Texas State against UTSA. And I'm still having a hard time to believe that's a 12 and a half point spread. UTSA lost to Houston, which is a good football team. So not taking anything away from that. But Texas State just went into Baylor and beat up the Bears. I know this is at UTSA. That's U- University of Texas. It's on San Antonio. I get it. It shouldn't be on almost two touchdowns. In fact, technically, it's over two touchdowns, but it shouldn't be that. Uh, it should be closer to a touchdown at the most. So that's a good ball game. You do got Marshall at Car- uh, East Carolina. Marshall got by on the hair of their chinny chin chin against Albany. It's going to have to be much better. East Carolina sort of held their own. They covered against Michigan. Uh, they Marshall better play better heading out to Greenville, North Carolina. You do have a rematch of last week's uh, last week's last year's 63 61 victory from Carolina over App State. Uh, and so we'll see if, I mean, again, if Joey Aguilar can play well here, God forbid he gets a win, it's going to be tough to replace um, place him when Ryan Berger is healthy. All right. UAB and Georgia Southern. UAB is playing a bunch of teams in uh, the Sun Belt. Georgia Southern didn't give up at a point to uh, the Citadel UAB with a victory. That's a nice little ball game. Uh, in uh, in week two of the college football season. Coastal Carolina gets Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State, by the way, is 2-0. and It should be noted. Uh, Georgia State gets UConn. Don't sleep on UConn. Georgia State did not play a very pretty ball game two uh, weeks ago against Rhode Island, or last week, not two weeks ago, but it was on a Thursday night. Uh, they need to play a little bit better. They got a win to move on, uh, but don't sleep on UConn. They lost to NC State by 10. Arkansas State is looking to score and get the bad taste out of their mouth uh, after 73 to nothing against uh, Oklahoma. They're taking on Memphis. That's a nice rivalry game. Uh, that's, you know, the two schools are not too far from each other. I think most schools, at least from the South, they actually fly into Memphis and bus to get to Jonesboro. Uh, so that's a big ball game there for Butch Jones to maybe turn the temperature down on his seat. Uh, Arkansas State is a 21 and a half point underdog. We talked about UL Monroe. I got a chance to go 2 and 0 for the first time since 2018. They're taking on Lamar. We'll see how Hunter Herring does having a full week of practice as the number 1. And good luck to Southern Miss. All right, they got their work cut out for them. They're taking on Florida State. Florida State manhandled LSU especially in the second half uh, of that ball game. And so, uh good luck uh, maybe Southern Miss can make, you know, a little bit of a surprise. You know, maybe, you know, they can punch, so to speak, you know, Florida State in the mouth a little bit because Florida State's going to come in there thinking, well, what do we, we, what we did against LSU, we're going to do against Southern Miss. Southern Miss will have a little fight in them. Uh, we'll see how much, how long it lasts. Florida State is a, it doesn't have it here. I thought it was about a 28 point spread. But it does not seem to have the spread. So <clears throat> not on the board just yet. There may be some injuries uh, involved. But we'll go over those again. What do we got? Like, I mean, Kansas State, Virginia, that's two. Carolina, that's three. And Florida State, that's four power five games. I think we may have had that last week. But, I mean, we got some, you know, some group of five games. Seems to be a better week uh, for the matchups uh, across the board in – uh, the Sun Belt, and we will preview these later on in the week. Again, thank you so much. We're continuing to grow. Appreciate everyone's effort. Again, feel free to share the video uh, in your Facebook group if you uh, do seem fit uh, to do that. Appreciate everybody subscribing and listening. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with another edition of Lockdown Sun Belt, your team every day.